Looking from satellite, it is quite obvious that Canada contains an extreme abundance of lakes. Some of these lakes represent impact craters, while others have differing origins. However, when people generally refer to the Great Lakes of North America, they tend to mean the voluminous lakes which are present along sections of the border of Canada, the state of Michigan, or both. The five famous Great Lakes in this region are Lake Huron, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, Lake Michigan, and Lake Superior. However, while these lakes are quite large, they are not the topic of this video. This is because there are four other similarly sized lakes within Canada, three of which are larger than Lake Ontario, and two of which are larger than Lake Erie. These lakes are, from smallest to largest in terms of current water surface area, Lake Athabasca, Lake Winnipeg, Great Slave Lake, and the Great Bear Lake. And, interestingly, all four of these lakes seem to be present along almost a completely straight line. So, why is this the case? The answer relates to the area's geology, as the occurrence of several large lakes along a nearly straight line is not a mere coincidence. Looking between the four Canadian lakes, you might notice something prominent. It is almost as if there is a hidden line which seemingly divides the terrain. To the east of this line, there are highly frequent lakes, while to the west of this line, lakes are less frequent. This line is not imaginary, as this boundary represents the edge of the so-called Canadian Shield. Put simply, the Canadian Shield is a craton, meaning the area outlined on screen has almost universally old rock dating back more than 1.5 billion years and has not experienced a high degree of volcanism since the region formed. In other words, while other sections of the continent have experienced dramatic changes due to geology during the last 1.5 billion years, this region has remained relatively intact, albeit with erosion still occurring. If you think of the Craton as a giant singular landmass, the following will make some sense. Large lakes generally form in large area drainage basins, where precipitation over a wide area is funneled to lower elevations until it reaches an area which is a low point often surrounded by four sides of higher terrain. Although the Canadian Shield has a wide range of elevations, there is a notable drop in elevation along its western edge. For example, while the Great Bear Lake is bordered to the south by an area with an elevation on one point of 225 meters above sea level, the Canadian Shield to the east has an elevation of in one point 446 meters above sea level. The Mackenzie and the Canadian portion of the Rocky Mountains occur to the west, which due to erosion and other factors have resulted in a gently decreasing elevation along terrain until it reaches the Canadian Shield. Thus, the border of the Canadian Shield represents a natural area where water will pool into large volume lakes. Establishing this, you might still be wondering why these lakes occur along a somewhat straight line. The answer is that cratons tend to not have jagged edges or areas with outlying peninsulas, but rather have semi-smooth edges. The western edge of the Canadian Shield is one such semi-smooth and not highly jagged edge. Due to the rather old age of much of the Canadian Shield, you can find kimberlite deposits with some diamonds in certain scattered regions, while in other sections you can find a type of lava that, ignoring some unlikely circumstances, can no longer erupt on Earth, comatite. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.